adding rational numbers lesson 3.2 so to add rational numbers with the same sign you apply those same rules as you did with integers so the same sign has the same sign in the rational numbers as well so in our example one Malachi hikes 2.5 miles I'm gonna put a circle in that and so hikes that many miles and stops for lunch then he hikes 1.5 more miles how many miles did he hike all together so I'm thinking addition on this so the two positive integers represent the distance he hiked okay so 2.5 and 1.5 I circled those two so he starts at 2.5 which is right here okay and he goes 1.5 so this is uh, 1 and then 0.5 okay so you end at 4 so it's to the uh, right because it's still positive and that addend those are an addend is a number that you're adding so your result is four that's where you landed okay he hiked four miles so kyle's pouring three-fourths of a liter liquid into a beaker okay he pours out one half of a liter so it looks like he's going to be subtracting on that what's the overall change okay so the negative numbers represent the amount of change Kyle pours so he oh he pours out okay so he's not doing nothing but pouring out so that's the pouring out of three-fourths of a liter and that's pouring out one half so you're removing them and all together we start at three-fourths so if this is um, if this is uh, what one fourth two fourths or a half and then that's three-fourths and then you uh, go for a half so a half is two quarters two fourths so here's one fourth two fourths or a half and you end up on uh, what that's one and one fourth negative one and one fourth that's where he ended right there and that's our result what they say is you move you have to move one half of a unit and the reason why they put these bars here is that's the absolute value they just want you to move a half of a unit and we are going to move in the negative direction so how do you determine whether to move right or left on a number line when adding rational numbers well you move to the right if you're adding positive numbers and you move to the left if you're adding negative numbers okay so use a number line to find each sum so pause the video and, and just see if you can figure these out first all right so So three plus one and a half. Well, I'm just thinking three plus one is four and you got four and a half. And that is exactly what you have. And then on the number line, if you start at three and you move one and a half, this right here is moving one and then this is moving one half. And so you end up at four and a half. And then this one here, you have negative 2.5 and negative 4.5 and they're both negatives. You're gonna add them up. It's gonna be a larger negative number. Uh, I believe that would be seven and so that's negative seven and on the number line what you do is you start at negative 2.5 so this is negative 2.5 right here and you move uh, negative 4.5 so this would be moving one uh, two three four and then that 0. 0.5 is there it is adding rational numbers with different signs okay so we have during the day the temperature increases by 4.5 degrees so if it increases that means it goes up and at night the temperature decreases by 7.5 so that goes down so it's like you're subtracting what's the overall change okay positive numbers represent the increase in temperature and negative numbers represent the decrease so we have a positive 4.5 that's the increase and negative 7.5 that's the decrease and the numbers are different so we do have to subtract them and if we look on the number line we see uh, we start at 4.5 so this right here is 4.5 and then we move in the negative direction to the left 7.5 so this would be here's the 0.5 so I'll just get the 0.5 out of the way and then 7 so 1 2 3 four five six seven so moving second so that means you landed on negative three and the answer is negative three and there we 
go. A decrease, so negative 3 represents a decrease overall of 3 degrees. Ernesto writes a check for $2.50. He deposits this, uh, $6 in his checking account. What's the overall increase or decrease in the balance? Okay, so positive, a positive number will represent a deposit. That means you're putting, putting money into the account. And a negative number will represent a withdrawal. You're taking money out of the account. And the word balance means how much money is, what's the result of the amount of money you have in the account? So, the writing the check, $2.50, there it is, and the deposit of uh, $6. So there's the deposit of $6. And so we have, you start at negative 2.5. So I have uh, start at negative 2.5, which is right here. And you move six units to the right. So this, uh, let's go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six units to the right, and you end up at 3.5. That point is 3.5 right there. And that's how we know now that our balance, the amount of money we have in the account now is $3.50. So do negative three plus two and two plus negative three have the, have the same sum? And does it matter if the negative number is first, the first addend or the second addend? And just to remind you, the addend right here, this is an addend and that's an addend. This is an addend and that's an addend. It's the ends of what you're adding. So, does it matter? Uh, no, the order does not matter. Uh, you're gonna, both of these problems ha, are equal to negative one. And this is the use, when the order doesn't matter, that's called the commutative property. Eh. Okay, the commutative property says it doesn't matter what order you add. So make a conjecture. Who? I need to erase that because that's no good. Um, so a conjecture. So you need to guess uh, based on the evidence here. Ooh, do you think the sum of a negative number and a positive number will always be negative? Hmm. I think sometimes. No, the sum could be positive or it could be negative. Uh, it depends on if you have a great, if the positive add-in has a greater absolute value and a negative, uh, or the negative add-in it has a uh, larger positive, uh, larger absolute value. For example, I could have, um, let's get this here. So uh, three plus negative four, that is equal to negative one. Or I can have four plus negative three, and that is equal to positive one. So it, it depends on which addend has a larger absolute value. Okay, find the number line. So you should be able to figure out what the answer is. Negative eight plus five. Think about that answer. And then the number line, we start at negative eight and we move five to the right and you end up on negative three. Uh, negative one half plus three fourths. That is negative one fourth. So when we have this, this is one half right there, and we're moving fourths. See, each of these is one fourth. So that's zero, and this is negative one fourth, and this is negative two fourths, I should say, I could say, or negative one half. So when we move three fourths to the left, this is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths and you landed on negative one fourth. So that's why that's the answer. Negative one plus seven, hmm. okay. The answer to that one is uh, six. So you start at negative one and then you move six to the right. When you move six to the right, you end up on, I'm sorry, when you move seven to the right, you end up on six. So find the additive inverse. So the opposite or the additive inverse of a number is the same distance to zero on the number line. They're really just opposites. So for example, uh, negative seven and positive seven, those are additive inverses. Football team loses 3.5 yards. On the next play, they gain 3.5 yards. What's the overall increase? 
Well, positive numbers will be the gain and negative numbers will be the loss. And so we have negative 3.5 and positive 3.5. So you start at negative 3.5 and you move up to zero and that means the change is zero yards. So this is important. Uh, the sum of a number of in its opposite is zero. Those also, those P and the negative P. Also, this is known as uh, P and the opposite of P. That could also be that. And we have these parentheses here to separate the operation from the sign. Okay, use number line. Uh, so, wow, that looks like it's going to be zero right there. Okay, and we have the number line there starting at two and a half and moving to the left two and a half stopping at zero and then this look like, like it's going to be zero as well you start at negative 4.5 and you go all the way to the right 4.5 and arrive at zero kendrick adds three-fourths a cup of uh, chicken to a pot he takes three-fourths oh so he adds it and then he takes it away looks like we're gonna have zero cups in the end Wow, Tina spent $5.25 on the craft supplies. She made $6.75 and spent an additional $3.25. And on Tuesday, she sold. Wow, there's a lot of. Uh, so what is the overall profit and loss? Profit means the difference between income and costs is positive. So she made more money than she spent. That's the profit. If it's a loss, she uh, made less money than she spent. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the negative numbers represent uh, the money she spent and the positive numbers make to represent the number uh, money she earned. So all that stuff. She spent $5.25 and she spent $3.25 and she earned $6.75 and she earned $4.50. And we're going to rearrange those. So we're going to put uh, the stuff she spent all together and the stuff she earned all together. And that's using the commutative property so we can rearrange things as we need. So uh, don't worry about the associative property. We're just going to add them together at this point. And so when you add these together, you get 850 and you add these together you get 1125 and you got to subtract them because there are going to be different signs here we could rearrange this to look like this and we can see that oh yeah you would subtract them and finally you get two dollars and 75 cents that's the overall profit all right so find each sum pause it and uh, see if you can figure them out first one is four then negative one then negative one again and 20. So that's it.